So when we're trying to get healthy, and trying to decide between whether we should be calorie counting versus carb counting, one of the things that's so frustrating and confusing is that there seems to be doctors saying calorie counting is the way to go. And of course, there are doctors saying carb counting is the way to go. So today we're going to walk you through some of these ideas and help you to understand why carb counting is actually what's going to be the healthiest, safest way for you to lose weight and get your health under control because it's both. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. Pat Chat Edition. I'm Violet. And I'm Pat. So we make these videos to help you to improve your health. And today we're talking about calorie counting versus carb counting. There, There is a lot of of sources like uh, gym trainer, uh, doctors that are still recommending calorie counting as a way to get healthier and to lose weight, as opposed to be careful with your carb and, and count your carbs. So calorie counting, basically you track everything you eat in a day, but the only really thing that matters the most are the total number of calories, whether they come from carbs, from fat, from, from proteins, you count your total number of calories. Most sources we watched were if you want to lose weight, for example, you create a calorie deficit. So basically you either eat less calories or you spend more calories by moving more. So in an app, like in a tracker that you have on your phone, you eat, for example, 2000 calories and you want to lose weight. Well, you create a plan that would ingest uh, like maybe, maybe 1,700 calories. Or you would add gym sessions to your day to spend a three, 400 calories. So basically you create a deficit. As opposed to carb counting, where you're gonna count the number of carbs in the same tracker, in the same app, but you're just focusing on the carbs. For example, you don't go over 20 grams of carbs. For keto. For keto. Although that's not the only way to do carb counting, right? Because you could also yeah. do a carb counting scenario where you're just diminishing your carbs. So the same way that you do calorie counting, True. if you're, you could say, well, I normally eat 350 grams of carbs a day. I'm going to aim at 300 or I'm going to yeah. aim at 250. Like that's another possibility. That's another possibility. But the article I did find like about carb counting was a bit negative about that that option because they solely focus on carb, meaning that you limit your carb, but you can uh, you can eat as much fat and as much protein as you want, which is not the case if you want to lose so weight. So they imply that you yeah. could still overeat the other yeah. things. Yeah. I want to go back to the calorie counting for a second because I want to point yeah. something out. Um, in that calorie counting scenario, part of the idea is that there's 3,500 calories that make up a pound. And the idea being that if I eat 3,500 calories, calories less each week mm -hmm. or each month i should lose a pound. a pound per week or per month what's interesting and this is the part one of this whole calorie counting story is that all the research shows that if you eat 3500 calories less each month over the course of years where you should lose a boatload of weight most people at the end of 10 years did not lose any weight. So that's part one of the story. Just, this is research. Mm -hmm. People followed over years and their foods being tracked. Did not even lose a pound. So what's happening there? So what's happening basically is that your metabolism is adapting to the number of calories you ingest. So the, the lower amount of calorie you ingest, the slower your metabolism will be. So if you get like down to, for example, let's say you, you, you want to eat 1500 calories per day, your metabolism will slow down to be able to function with those calories per day, which means like at some point you won't lose, like you won't lose any more weight because you slowed down to a point where you're just like comfortable with what you ingest. So then why do they continue to push this as a strategy? Guess what? That first six months, you're actually going to lose weight. And this is the part where I personally start to feel like it's a conspiracy because you're going to regain the weight, possibly go over the weight and just stay there. And if you keep eating that amount of calories, you're just going to stay there, as he just said. Yeah. So again, the reason that they push this is because you're on this yo-yo diet thing yeah. and it keeps trainers, the WWs and the Jennies in, in, in business, right? That they keep getting you to come back on this faulty promise that calories is going to change your life. Yeah. It's not. And needless to say, like you 
kind of starve yourself for like so many months that when you attain your goal, for example, you lost your 10 pounds for your bikini summer, blah, blah. Uh, is that really you, your goal though? Yeah, That's it, the other thing. The, yeah, you, it, anybody who's doing usually, this, is that yeah. really your goal? Just 10 pounds? Mm. Because the truth is in six months, that's what you're going to lose. Yeah. Somewhere between 10 to 12 pounds if you're safely losing at right. a pound or two per month. Mm. But was that really your goal? Yeah. Just 10? Having starved yourself for that many months, when you like when you're gonna get back to eating normally, you're not gonna get back to eating normally. You might go from, for example, a fifteen hundred calories per day instead of a two thousand. You might go to two to twenty two hundred, twenty three hundred. So so that's like where like the yo yo dieting idea is um, is interesting. We watched the video just yesterday. It was so funny where that gym trainer was like. Yeah, uh, if you raise your number of calories, your metabolism is going to raise. If you lower your calories, your your metabolism is going to slow down. But the only way to lose weight and get healthy is to slow your metabolism, like to slow no, your metabolism said, down. He, no, no, to, to he, didn't to slow, he didn't say no, to no, slow you. He, he said, said the to, only way to lose weight is to, to calorie, calorie count and to, yeah, restrict. to restrict. So it basically, yeah. he contradicted himself. Yeah. Like hugely. But I feel like the way that he contradicts himself, again, for the average person, it flies under the radar. If I eat less calories, my metabolism is going to go down. So here's the answer on how to, mm-hmm. how to restrict calories. And so, people don't notice. Yeah. So calorie counting doesn't work. We know, we know that. You, you even I want to like, add to that, though, yeah. because you talked about starving yourself. There was a, actually Ansel Keys, <laughs> who is the bane of our existence for certain things. But he actually did a, a study that showed that you can reduce people's calorie intake and their metabolism will slow and he showed all that information but the other thing that he showed that was really interesting to me that was more the point psychologically what was happening as people's calorie count came down and they lost weight their body temperature dropped Hmm. their energy dropped and their mind became completely focused on getting food they were they became obsessed with food So here's the other piece of the puzzle of why calorie counting doesn't work. You do all this work to bring your calorie count down to lose weight. Mm -hmm. But the entire time that you're doing that, your brain is like, get food, get food, get food, get food, get food, get food. So exactly what Dr. Fung explained to us, Mm -hmm. that the other hormones in your body are pushing you to get food because it's saying, hey, normally we have more energy than this. What the heck? Go and find a bison. Right? Go and kill a zebra. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) Right? And we don't do it. And so what's our brain doing? Get food. Get food. Mm -hmm. Get food. Do you think that you're going to be able to ignore those signals forever? Going back to the carb counting idea. The thing that you said earlier, and we're talking about, like, how to do something properly. They they describe carb counting as focusing on carbohydrates and then turn around and said, but fat and protein is, like, Mm -hmm. not a paid. That's not reality. It's not that you're ignoring fat. It's not that you're ignoring Mm -hmm. protein. You're eating to satiation. Mm -hmm. What's so important and the difference between calorie counting and carbohydrate counting is that when I bring my carbohydrate number down to 20 or less, so now we're talking about the number that doctors believe your body could handle, then I'm eating everything else to satiation. That means I'm listening to my body Mm. compared to calories counting where I'm actually ignoring every signal my body is Mm. giving me because I'm taking my energy down across the board. My body is screaming, hungry, hungry, hungry. And I'm saying, shut up, Mm. shut up. I'm going to lose weight. Does anybody see a problem with this? Mm. Why do we think that we can just shut our body up that it's just gonna Hmm. oh violet knows better than this complex internal workings that my little ideas are more important than what my body Hmm. so i think Hmm. the thing that is missed in all of these conversations when you diminish the amount of carbohydrates that you eat you still listen to your body and eat until satiation on the other two macronutrients, which are the yeah. only real macronutrients, yeah. by the way, because carbohydrates are not. I and, will fight you mm, to the death. Yeah. And you need to make peace with the fact that 
fat is not the evil here. Counting your grams of carbs to 20 or less and eating for 400 grams of, uh, of uh, protein is not necessarily the LT way to do that too. You need a balanced diet. You need to have an idea of your fat number, of your protein number, but you you can like do it in a lazier way, if I if I may, uh, by eating the same amount of meat that you uh, you usually eat, by eating the fat that's on your meat, that using uh, full fat uh, dressing for your salads. So my point was like I I could understand where the did that article was going, where it's not just a matter of keeping your your uh, your carbs to 20 gram or less and eating like bad fats and bad food and bad protein and i feel like this is again where i'm going to say that eating a healthy ketogenic lifestyle and eating just excessive fat for the sake of eating mm. fat putting bacon on everything and like you know and i don't even i won't i don't consider it lazy to eat to satiation i don't consider it lazy because even if I'm eating to satiation, you still need to make sure your carbs are not over the... So you still need to track. Here's a reality for everybody to think about. If I eat to satiation, but I'm still allowing in 40, 50, 90 grams of carbs a day, I will at some point resume gaining weight because my body will put those carbohydrates away as fat. Like this idea that we can be lazy with our body, I don't agree with that. You actually need to pay attention. You need to check, yeah. right? You will regain the weight. Like this is not, this is, it's yo-yo dieting. Yo-yo dieting is yo-yo dieting no matter what type of diet you happen to be living because the standard American mm. diet is a way of eating. It's a diet, it's a way of eating. Keto diet is a way of eating. So no matter which one you're doing, if you, stop doing the healthy thing mm. your body will resume the problem yeah. i want i wanted to bring that like in a patch ad because oftentimes when you when you look for videos about getting healthy or article about getting healthy it's often a matter of calorie limiting or carb counting but we never push to a deeper science with like insulin for example we never talk about insulin so yeah, restricting your uh, your calories to seventeen hundred per day might work for a short time, but if sixty percent of that comes from uh, from oh, carbs, you're just like uh, digging your. Um, so you're digging like, your own grave. You you're you're yeah, you're, so so you're digging your own grave because like your insulin is gonna spike all the time. You're always gonna be hungry. Maybe if you were limiting your calories, but in a healthy way with a keto you might have a chance but you're still gonna end up slowing your metabolism and and but lose this, the result at some go, point but that's the part of the problem is that why do we think that our body gives a hot chew about calories, calories yeah. your body is not a chemistry lab it doesn't care about calories right it's like you're trying to you know it's like you're trying to get your body to understand something that it's just not relevant to it Right? Like when you go to gas up your car, the car will react to the gasoline you put in. So if it's a diesel car and you put petrol in it, it's going to react. Not because it knows the difference, it's because in the actual engine, it's reacting differently. Right? But if you told the car, listen, shh, 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 take this petrol, <laughs> it's still going to react to the fact that it's supposed to get diesel and you're putting in pet, uh, pet, petrol, right? So it's like, we have to stop trying to fool our body into thinking that a metric that we use to understand food matters to our body. Because that metric doesn't matter to your body. Your body doesn't care. What it wants is a clean energy source. What your car wants is a clean energy source. We need some carbs and our body makes them. So actuality, do we need to eat them? So this is even a conversation in like, like really, when you stop and truly answer this question, is there ever a need, N-E-E-D, to eat carbohydrates? You realize the answer to that is no, mm. but we get into these debates, right? Yeah. What's the best way to, yeah. if you weren't eating carbohydrates and you were only eating protein sources, would your weight be where it is? And the true answer to that question is very likely no.
we get into this situation because we want carbohydrates. Want, and I use that word loosely. Yeah. We're well, we addicted to yeah. con- <laughs> carbohydrates and we allow them into our life because we're addicted, not mm-hmm. because they need to be there. And how do we know this? When we watch our children, our little small children who haven't quite become addicted yet, mm-hmm. and they push, they push the cake sugar, away. Yeah. They push ice cream away. They're going for the bland vegetable, right? And I really, I go back to it all the time. I wish I would have listened to my daughter. Mm-hmm. She was pushing these things away, and I wish I understood what that meant. But today we can understand, yeah. right? That very basic understanding that the energy that I'm taking in from carbohydrates, if it's limited and I allow myself to eat the rest of the food I eat to satiation, to satiation, I've already managed my fat and protein Mm -hmm. number just by doing that one thing, Mm -hmm. eating to satiation. Whatever the number ends up being is what my body needed because I stopped eating when I was no longer hungry. That's what satiation means. Mm -hmm. You stop eating when the hunger isn't there. I'm gonna add one other thing there. That means you're not scarfing your food down. If you eat super fast, you'll be able to put away a lot more food than if you eat at a slower pace. This is how competitive eaters get the food down. They eat so fast that their body can't give them the signal to stop. And we know this, eat slower, you will get less food down. Eat carbs, you will get more More food food down. down. Carbs push you to eat. Have you ever dieted, Pat? Like before doing keto, have you ever had a banana diet? Of course, like I've uh, I've dieted in the past. I uh, was more careful with my number of calories, of course. But I was more like I move more like, oh, I need to do more sports. I need to create that deficit by going to the gym, by taking spinning classes. And, and, and mm, they never worked. They never worked. Like the keto diet and the low carb were really the first time I did something, I think in my life where like it did work. Okay, maybe ex- exp- except for when I was in high school where I was doing 30 hours of badminton per week, I was eating the carbs, but I was moving like crazy. But like, um, yeah. But you were also growing. Like, we, was, need yeah. to, we need to also keep in mind that our young people are growing. So we don't necessarily see the weight on them mm. because it's going into the height that they're getting. But yeah. at some point the height um, yeah. maxes out. Mm-hmm. And then with starts to happen, right? Yeah. And I think for a lot of us, we don't notice that. But, but yeah, th- there's that. But like for me, when it started happening, it was after school. <laughs> after when I went out of university, I think like you get a job, you get some money, go to restaurants, like you you can afford those things you didn't, uh, uh, you were not able to afford, like where, you, where your, your mom was cooking for you. So for me, the big, I think my first big weight gain happened just right after I was out of school. But my first question job. to you is you notice it at that point, but yeah. it doesn't mean that you gained 40 pounds in two days. It probably uh, was starting well, when no, you yeah, were couple, in university, you see yeah. university and it was like going, like this is the thing is that, I feel like that's one of the things I, talk, I talked about. It's like most of us won't realize we've gained weight until we look at a picture of ourselves from a well, year ago yeah. or, or like we go to put on a pair of pants that doesn't fit all of a sudden. Yeah. And it's like, like you don't see it because you're used to looking at yourself in the mirror like every single day I look at me, every day, right? That's why I keep mm-hmm. stepping on the scale. Like on a monthly basis, I step on the scale because I know that I could be watching myself gaining weight and just not notice, right? Yeah. And even though I eat as good as I do, I still step on the scale every month yeah. just to be sure because, right, you never know. So like, I do think that mm-hmm. there's a lot of like, we want to believe that working out is going to affect our weight somehow. Like if we mm-hmm. can eat a problem, on one hand and then just exercise and like if I'm eating the food do you really think that you can do as much exercise as the amount of energy that you're eating like and that's daily Mm. too a lot of the time when we're overeating and you actually check how much food you're eating so like I remember the first time I got a calculator a food calculator and this is just the way that Violet's brain works my first thing I did was just input the food that I'm eating regularly just to see where am I starting and guess what Oh my gosh, like I was eating 3,000, 3,500, like sometimes 2,000, depending on what day, what meals. But like I was seeing 3,000 and getting either close to or 3,000. Well, what did they say? 3,500 calories is a pound? Do I really believe I needed to be eating 3,000 calories? Like if Mm -hmm. I'm trying, if I'm overweight already, what's the funny thing? 
on keto. How many times was my calories close <laughs> to 3,000? Yeah. And did I, I and, and yet I was losing, right? So yeah. is it the calories? Like you said, yeah. why are we never talking about hormones? Mm. Insulin is turned on when there's a lot of carbohydrates in the system, you have much more insulin than when there's a little bit of carbohydrates. Yes, insulin does respond to fat. Yes, insulin does respond to protein. But the interesting thing is, if there's carbohydrates there, the reaction insulin yes. is having is so much more than if there isn't carbohydrates there. We need to understand that we set ourselves up. Yeah. Yeah. We set ourselves up. And then we cry about it after mm. that. Oh, my God, I, I've gained weight. Yeah. So, yeah, I do. I know for myself, yeah. you know, I looked at a picture, looked at the picture and be like, oh, how? How? Yeah. how? By eating spaghettis. <laughs> yeah. But that, By eating yeah. But it, I did it, like spaghetti. I have to be honest. You know, like <laughs> whatever you want to call your diet, whether it's keto, paleo, whatever you like the answer is quite simple you're getting healthier by eliminating the grains you getting you're getting healthier by eliminating especially eliminating the added sugar uh, by eliminating the fruits what are the other sources that i might like so so whenever you don't have the pasta you don't have the rice you don't have the Process, bread you don't basically. have the cookies and you don't have all of course the box processed food your your metabolism is going is going to regulate itself your weight is going to regulate itself your skin defects are going to disappear like you're just going to get healthier like healthier it's amazing because mm. we know this and yet we don't know it like it's yeah. like you but you're right i think part of the problem is we don't talk enough about the hormone component mm. of the story so wellness warriors what i want you to understand is that it is not just taking the carbs down low when you take the carbs down low your insulin also is not on as often or as high right and when you have a less insulin response that helps your body across the board right one of the things that i realized from watching a lot of these doctors and hearing them talk about insulin is how insulin cortisol ghrelin leptin like all of these hormones are in relation to each other our body loves homeostasis. So what happens when insulin is up here? What does my body do to these other hormones? Right? Do, 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 right? They're going to, it's going to meet. They, they, they want home. Right? So if I can't pull the insulin down, the other hormones have to do things to counteract. I think it's so important for us to start to really think about, and again, complex, complex. Mm -hmm. I get it. Like, I know I don't, I, I'm, I'm scratching the surface of my understanding. Right. And a lot of what you're hearing me say is just me listening to doctors and pulling things together and trying to be like, yeah, these, these things have to be related. But at the same time, if I know that they're related and I just do mm. the minimum of understanding that, hey, every time I eat, I will have an insulin response regardless of what I eat. And if I eat carbs, I'm having a higher oh, insulin yeah. response. The smaller the amount of carbs, the mm. smaller the amount of insulin response. Right. So it's like knowing that piece of information how does it help me there's a 99.9 .9 of the reason that i'm one meal a day is because i do still eat carbs i would rather have one insulin response that is involving carbohydrates than have two because i know that's putting my body in a bad situation and even if meal one or meal two whichever one is only protein and fat i still rose my insulin and if I'm going to have carbs at some other point in the day, I know it's adding to what's there because it's not like it goes up and disappears. It goes up and it tapers down. So your insulin responses are additive. We need to understand that. And we're not saying, obviously, that gym and exercise is a bad thing. You can gym and exercise like with a no carb, low carb lifestyle like you're active i go to the gym i try to go twice a week like you sometimes like uh, fit that in my schedule but like yeah it's it's possible you don't need to load up on carbs because it's your like you, know, you you have to to eat carbs before you go to the gym like your fat is an as good energy source or like even better energy source for for that going to the gym oh. fasted you actually have more yeah. human growth hormone you actually can build more muscle 
it's been mm-hmm. shown because when you're fasted your body believes you mm-hmm. need more muscle and more energy to go and chase tackle them. that mi- yeah. bison right so yeah. like we need to understand how this works so that's a good point like uh fasting versus low calories there's a difference like your body doesn't react the same way why for example on fasting your body is not going to slow your metabolism it's going to speed up your metabolism because because it thinks you need to go find food so again going back to that ansel keys um Mm. uh study where the people's metabolism slowed down because they still had a caloric load that was coming in but it was just not enough for their body Mm. their body slowed down if i actually just don't eat my body ramps up my metabolism because clearly violet you need to go and find some food but when i'm when i'm eating so i'm actually eating my body's getting the the story that oh this is how much food is going to be coming in from now on i need to change the amount of energy i'm using you know dr fung used a very interesting analogy of a cold mine saying how like if you had coal coming into a company and the company was doing things with that that energy and the amount of coal coming in was diminished and the employees didn't regulate the output Mm -hmm. that they would run out of coal and that probably they would all get fired right because why didn't you regulate you saw we were getting less right why would you make us in a situation where we can't actually produce for three or four months and it just makes sense right your body is not going to do that your body's going to regulate based on what's coming in right because if i burn up all that energy what's fueling you so obviously like after you said that the most probably the most dangerous thing you could do is lower your calorie intake then when you hit the plateau lower your calorie intake then uh, the next plateau you lower your calorie intake and that's exactly what people do yeah and then that's like because when you start eating again like your body is not like you're gonna fool me twice or three times like i'm gonna store like uh everything like you put but this but that's unfortunately what a lot of people do right they will they will hit a plateau and then they will just decrease but so here's the thing and the reason it doesn't work going back to that when I'm down to 1,200, 1,000 calories, can I maintain that forever? Mm. Like, that's really hard. So even if somehow I manage to get my body to a state where I'm at a weight that I'm okay with, what are my organs doing? If there's not enough energy coming in, what happens to our friends who are anorexic? Their body starts mm. to shut down. Mm-hmm. Right? Your organs and like, so if you're a lady, you stop menstruating. And if you're male, like, I can't, I know there's other things that happen, Mm -hmm. but things start to shut down. Mm -hmm. Our bodies cannot take that. So, first of all, there's a minimum that you can get to before, like, you're really in trouble. But the other side of this is that at some point, if you're a typical person, so you're not an anorexic, you're going to get down because you're fighting your natural instinct to eat. And what happens when you get to your weight that you're trying to accomplish? There's no reason to keep Mm. doing this anymore. Mm. And you start eating again. And what happens? Mm. You put the weight back Mm. on. And then what happens? We go through the cycle all over again. Right? And unfortunately, most people who yo-yo diet end up at a much higher weight than when they began. And this is not good for you. It's not good for anybody. Right? In fact, what you want is to get to a reasonable weight that's good for your body and where your body is functioning the best that it can possibly function and if you do that and get to that reasonable weight you'll be able to stay there indefinitely because this is where your body feels best and healthy Mm. right and it's 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 not even a fight at that point it's just what your body does Mm. you know both you and i have lost significant amount of weight Mm. and it's I know for sure two years for me. Have you passed your two year yet? Or we're getting close to it. Yeah, we're close to it, I think. So two years, almost two years, Mm -hmm. and still well below where we started, right? I mean, I'm actually where I want to be, and you're below where you started. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing. It's not hard. No. It's not hard when you commit to doing the healthy thing. It sure gets hard when you only focus on lose the weight, and that's all you're caring about. Mm -hmm. But if you're focused on doing what's healthy, then you can do it and you can be long-term. What's the most important to grasp here is that calorie counting sets you up. Mm -hmm. 
because it's not really telling you about the hormones. It's not really telling you about what your body needs. It's just saying restrict everything. Carb counting improperly can also set you up. Again, not talking about the hormones and not talking about what your body actually needs. Mm -hmm. What we are suggesting to you guys is to focus on eating a healthy lifestyle that involves lower carbs. So 20 grams or less if you really want to make sure that you're doing everything to make sure your body is going to be healthy, but at minimum low carb. And then eat protein and fat to satiation. If you do that, you're going to be healthier. Yeah. Right? You need to understand how your body works. I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, Patch Hat Edition. We love making these videos for you guys. Teespring, Patreon, in the description below. Can't wait to talk to you guys again next week. Talk to you next week.